Iranian guy. And there was a guy here talking about we need some Iranian diplomats involved in this political scene. So I'm that uh, independent voice that's going to bring you the side, the other side. Because uh, as a Norwegian Iranian, I'm concerned about the Norwegian interest and also the Ira Iranian interest. And uh, I would like to say that there's been some misinterpretations from memory. Memory is, uh, is the Middle East institution for... Uh, uh, in institution for they're, they're the ones that is responsible to translate the Arabic world, the Iranian world, over to the Western world. And the thing that is that they've been falsifying quotes from Ahmadinejad. The the quote that he's trying to impose on us, he's trying to say that Iran is wanting to wipe Israel off the map, is a complete bogus. Because I've heard the transcript, I I heard the speech. It was from a conference that was. Uh, it was named World Without Zionism, and this is a big concern for every, everybody because Zionism is a, a, a human hostile ideology. So the thing is that he was speaking to 2,000 university students. He was speaking to 2,000 university students about the crisis and who is imposing the crisis in the Middle East. And he said that, this is a quote, he said, this occupying regime that is in Jerusalem must vanish from the times of history. This is not a d direct quote or a pledge of allegiance to go into war and to make and to shoot the missiles and destroy Israel. This is just a hope that we want the occupying regime that is terrorizing the Palestinians, the Lebanese, the Iraqis. We want them to to end just like the Soviet Union did. This is not a this is not a quote that is right for you to use because you're actually, you're, we call it in Norway, you're, lead, you're a warmonger, you know, you want war, you talk about, no, you don't want war, but all the things that Israel is doing right now, today, they just sent 10,000 bunker busters, 10, 000, this is from Scott Herald Times, from yesterday, they said that America will be the one that is going to bomb Iran, and what about the fear for mutual destruction? What about the fear for mutual, are you actually saying that Iranians are that irrational and that malicious that we will attempt to destroy Israel with nuclear weapons that, by the way, is 70% of Israel is occupied Palestinian territory, right? Why would they attack their own people that they are feeding money to and trying to help their freedom fight, you know? This is, this is complete, this is a form of political racism to quote your enemies and your political enemies and to say that they're irrational and that, they're, that, they're, that they don't have any ability to think rational. Like even the Bumlevi guy said that the re crazy regime of Iran, you know, he's already doing this prejudice uh, for Lomen. Well, it's not right to throw these kind of words because Iran is a nation that needs nuclear energy for their peaceful purpose for their country. We are 80 million people in Iran and we are using our electricity. We've, we're getting our electricity from uh, fossil fuels and everybody's talking okay. about the environment, right? So we just want you guys to just pull back from Iraq, from Afghanistan, from Lebanon, from from all those countries that you're occupying today before you talk about another diversion. You're trying to make a diversion, attack a new country, so we will forget the shit that you're doing today. Um, and while you're talking, how would Lindy can also approach the stage? Wow, uh, that was all inspiring. I am, uh, I'm, uh, Azim, I am uh, half Norwegian and uh, half uh, Palestinian, so uh, uh, not Iranian though. But uh, my uh, question uh, goes directly to uh, Mr. Ambassador, my brother from the other side of the wall. Uh, earlier you mentioned that uh, Iran was trying to acquire uh, these nuclear weapons in an illegal kind of way. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Israel uh, did not go uh, through a lawful way to acquire theirs, or am I wrong? Do you think, uh, as of course the only representative of a uh, nuclear power, do you think uh, uh, dismantling the force of Israel's nuclear powers 
uh, would lessen uh, Iran's government's lust for their own, or has there even been discussed a plan for dismantling these these weapons? And uh, back to uh, m my brother's point here uh, on uh, on uh, Iran's usage of uh, uh, of, uh, of these weapons on uh, on Israel. I, I really doubt that Ira Iran would really go to the length of using nuclear power to destroy a land where people that aren't even supposed to be there who have stolen the land of their, of their Semitic brothers I, I, I doubt that they have the right to do that I, I, I don't think they have the conscience to do that Thanks Hopefully. Those are some good questions. I uh, hope you answered those before mine. Um, <laughs> let me just preface this by saying that uh, I'm no big fan of the Iranian government, but I feel I have to ask this question. The IAEA has a treaty that's called Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. There are four countries that have never signed this tre treaty. That's North Korea, uh, India, Pakistan and Israel. And I just want to know what gives Israel the right to throw stones about openness, about nuclear programs, and uh, human rights especially, maybe. I think that there's several questions directed uh, here to Mr. Ambassador, and I'm going to ask you to, to answer them firstly. Well, thank you. Thank you for the questions. Um, first of all, I would like to, to try to answer very briefly the question of uh, uh, the declarations that are coming out from uh, Tehran and from the uh, leadership. I will uh, challenge uh, this uh, Iranian Norwegian student to bring me one one quotation of the regime in Iran that recognizes the right of Israel to exist. One quotation. Uh, in the moment that he will uh, bring me uh, this quotation, then I see that we will start changing our opinion about uh, Iran. And you know where are you sitting now? I can come to the embassy tomorrow, but you have the embassy under police siege, so yeah, we're yeah, not even know, close I to know, getting know, to talk to you. It's very nice to speak about this. Okay, you can bring me the, you can send it to me by mail. I'll no bring problem. four. Uh, uh, one quotation that you are recognizing the right of Israel to exist, and it will change completely the equation. Second, regarding the translation of uh, um, Farsi uh, to other languages. Let me uh, tell you something, and I will disclose to you a big, big secret. We have in Israel a lot of people that are speaking Persian. A lot of people. We don't need any translation to know what's coming out from the leadership from Iran, and we know from direct sources what they are saying. Then this is not a problem of translation, this is a problem of substance and the declaration and the radical declaration that's coming out from, uh, from uh, Tehran. Regarding the, uh, the other uh, student that uh, is uh, uh, trying to explain that the nuclear uh, capabilities that uh, Iran is trying to develop is uh, to uh, uh, have electricity, uh, well, I could understand it if it was in a poor country without any oil, but uh, knowing the quantity of oil that uh, Iran has do we really believe that Iran needs these uh, nuclear capabilities in order to create electricity? Come on, I think that nobody is going to uh, buy this, uh, this claim. Um, regarding the, uh, the friend here, that is sitting in the other side of the fence, as he mentioned, first of all, let me recommend you something. If you would like to fulfill your national aspirations as the Palestinians don't bind and New York don't connect your future to Iran. If you connect your future with Iran, the only thing that you will bring to your people is misery and more wars. And 